My name is Jaslyn Temple. I'm a junior at Caddo Parish Magnet High School, and I'm the Teen Advisory Committee Secretary for 2020-2021. First, the committee would like to give a big round of applause for the International Youth Foundation's 30th anniversary. They have been so helpful with the TAC over the years, and we would like to give a big thanks for all their continued help and support. The Teen Advisory Committee is a youth-led advisory board to the Leadership Council at Step Forward. We advise and discuss policies and changes regarding our local teens. We focused on teen mental wellness within health because we came to a consensus that this is an issue in the community. Students in more recent years have felt more pressures that affect their coping skills, stress levels, and mood. We found that these pressures stemmed mostly from school. Most surveyors selecting yes to challenges said that they had experienced challenges which had negatively impacted their physical or emotional well-being within the school setting. We also found through the survey is that more students confided in a friend rather than a school counselor or even a parent. 34% of those who confided in a friend felt that working with them did not help. 34% is a significant number. So we thought, what can we suggest to reduce this number so that all who confide can feel advised and helped? This became a critical point in the teen summit. It was also critical that we discuss why students felt an increase in pressures, mostly stemming from schools. Following our hypothesis that students would mostly be affected by school, Coming up with school-based solutions became the answer. Coming out of the summit, attendees had created four possible policies to recommend to the school board. They are currently working on implementing these throughout the entire school district, which will impact thousands of students. A few months ago, the TAC engaged with over 60 students in the teen summit focusing on mental wellness. This is a part of our three main focuses, education, health, and civic engagement. In preparation for the summit, we worked with mental health professionals, Dr. Johnette Magner and Dr. Pamela McPherson, to develop questions for a survey on students' mental health throughout their lives. Although the survey was reviewed and approved by Caddo's legal team, it was unfortunately unapproved by Bozier for particular concerns. Even so, the survey was disseminated to over 5,000 Caddo Parish students using a Google form. The data was later saved and reviewed using a database called SurveyMonkey. Our data analysis team, which consisted of four TAC members and statistics expert Dr. Wes Hines, studied the data to determine patterns encompassing the mental health needs of our district. Using the data, the group constructed a presentation to share our findings with community leaders and summit attendees. Gaining so much support from school and community leaders for the summit, we found the method very successful and we recommend it for future data collection projects to improve communication. Thank you all so much for your time and recognition of the International Youth Foundation and their support of the Teen Advisory Committee throughout their journey. Now we'll have Tamaya Davis, our Teen Advisory Committee Vice President. Thank you, Jaslyn. Hello, everyone. My name is Tamaya Davis, and I'm currently a senior at Benton High School in Benton, Louisiana. And I'm this year's Teen Advisory Committee Vice President. I would like to thank you guys for giving us this opportunity and this platform to speak about something that we're truly passionate about. So I'm gonna start off by first talking about the planning of our in-person So. Before Corona hit, we planned to have our team summit in person, face to face, with our attendees. Um, we planned for the summit to take place on Wednesday, March 18th, and our location was the Louisiana Tech Academic Success Center on Bossier Parish Community College's campus. We originally scheduled for the summit planning to take up to four months. However, we ended up planning for about six months. During this time, we had meetings three times a week with our adult advisors and our teen advisory committee members. During this time, we gathered speakers, resources, attendees, and we secured the location. We also selected our panelists who were going to be on our panel for the Q&A portion of the summit. These panelists were selected to talk about mental health in every way that it affects teens. The panelists were Dr. McPherson, Ms. Jessica Layton, Mr. Clay Walker, and Pastor Andrew Randall. Now I would like to talk about delegate selection. The delegates were selected by the counselors. We contacted the schools and gave them a list of what we were looking for. Mainly, we wanted underrepresented teams 
who were ready to make a change. After six months of planning, March 18th was almost here and we were so excited to move on with our team summit. However, on March 16th, we found out that we would have to move the summit to a virtual platform. And so we began to plan our Zoom summit. Due to this challenge that we did not plan for, we had to push the summit back two months. During those two months, we had Zoom calls with our Teen Advisory Committee every week. We also converted all presentations to either pre-recorded videos or we prepared to give them live on Zoom. We used large breakout sessions in order to disseminate information about mental health, followed by smaller breakout groups in order to have more in-depth discussions and to keep the delegates engaged. In our breakout sessions, we use the five whys and the four blocker tools in order to determine the effectiveness and the need for all solutions that we came up with. I will now break down the five whys tool in order to give you a better understanding. The five whys tool is an interrogative technique used to explore the cause and effect relationships underlying a particular problem. The primary goal of the technique is to determine the root cause of a problem by repeating the question, why? Each answer forms the basis of the next question. The five in the name comes from an observation on the number of questions needed to resolve the problem. Not all problems have a single root cause. If one wishes to uncover multiple root causes, the method must be repeated asking a different sequence of questions each time. I will now give you an example of the five whys exercise in action. This is the same example that we used to explain the exercise to the delegates during the summit. So we will start with a problem statement. For this example, the problem statement is there is insufficient parking space for students on high school campuses. Then we would start by brainstorming our first why. You would ask the question, why is there insufficient parking space for students on high school campuses? Then your answer could be that maybe officials underestimated the number of student drivers when constructing the school. You would then, you would then ask your second why. Why may have officials underestimated the number of student drivers? An answer to that could be when schools were being built, fewer students drove to school. You would then ask another why. Why were fewer students driving to school? Maybe fewer students were driving to school because only upperclassmen own cars to drive. You would, then ask, you would then ask another question. Why did only upperclassmen own cars to drive? An answer to that could be Driving was used for transportation and less for social status. You may then ask, why was driving used for transportation and less for social status? And then an answer to that could be that cars were more expensive and less accessible, so students opted for easier methods. I will now explain the four blocker exercise. The four blocker exercise is basically an exercise where you take your solutions to your problem and divide them into four quadrants to determine the effectiveness and the cost of those solutions. For this exercise, we will be using the same problem statement which states, there's insufficient parking space for students on high school campuses. We also have a list of solutions. These are the solutions that we will place in the corresponding quadrants. The first quadrant number one will contain solutions that are easy to do, have no to low cost, and are minimal resources to implement, and have a high impact on the problem. Quadrant two will have the solutions that are hard to do, are costly and or require extensive resources to implement, but have a high impact on the problem. It also may require more time or money to complete. Quadrant three will consist of solutions that are easy to do, have a no to low cost and or minimal resources to implement. However, they have a low impact on the problem. And lastly, quadrant four will consist of the solutions that are hard to do, are costly and or require extensive resources to implement 
and have a low impact on the problem. Now let's place our solutions in the corresponding quadrants. Let's start with solution one. Implement a lottery for parking passes based on the number of spots. I believe that this solution would go in box number one because it would be easy to do, it has no to low cost, and it would have a high impact. Now solution two says to implement carpool measures requiring every student driver to have two passengers in order to park on campus. I would put this solution in box number two. This would be hard to do, it'd be costly, however, it would have a high impact on the problem. Moving on to solution three, implement a cutoff date for students to purchase parking passes. I would put this in box number one. This would be easy to do, it would have no to low cost, and it would have a high impact on the problem. Now, solution number four is to construct a parking garage on existing student parking. I would put this in box number four. This would be hard to do, costly, and it would have a low impact on the problem. Lastly, we have solution number five, to reduce the number of students admitted to the school. I would put this into box number three. This would be easy to do. It would have no to low cost. However, it would have a low impact on the problem. I hope that you now have a better understanding of the five whys and the four blocker exercise. We used these two exercises during the summit and we found them to be very helpful. Then we took those ideas from the breakout sessions and presented them to the large group. And the large group selected the two best ideas from all breakout sessions that we would present to the superintendents. We also have multiple giveaways during the summit in order to keep students engaged on this virtual platform. At the conclusion of the summit, we sent out a survey link to the attendees to gather information on how they thought the summit went and the results were overwhelmingly positive. When students were asked, what is one thing you learned because of your participation in the summit? One student said, I learned ways to support and comfort a friend in need and how to handle my own stress. Another student said, I learned that students should be more involved and active in helping spread awareness for mental health and how to be a good friend to others when they are suffering with mental health. Now, I will give the floor back to Jaslyn to wrap up and talk about policy recommendations. We called these solutions policy recommendations, brainstormed and created by Teen Summit attendees. Before finding the top most voted solutions, a multitude of collaborative ideas had been formed. But more specific details had been added by the TAC before presenting the ideas to superintendents. After bringing them to superintendents, we held a news conference to share our policy recommendations with the public. I will now share our policy recommendations with you. Our first set of policy recommendations fall under the topic of mental health services. Policy recommendation A is that each school should differentiate the procedures for students to contact counselors with academic needs and for students to contact counselors with emotional needs. This is because students often feel like they can only approach counselors if they have an academic problem. Policy recommendation B is that schools should provide a virtual form to schedule appointment times with the counselors to quicken the response time and to provide anonymity with the student body when seeking help. This will help with students feeling safe when contacting counselors. Our next policy recommendation under the topic mental health services is that weekly counselors should be required to visit with the student body outside of office visitations. And our next policy recommendation is that schools should work to establish a system in which the same counselor follows the student from ninth grade to 12th grade. Both of these recommendations will help the students become more familiar and comfortable with their counselors. And our last policy recommendation under this topic is that each school should develop prevention strategies executed on school campuses that promote mental wellness. These efforts should include stress relief informational efforts 
awareness efforts, and moments in the school day designated for moments of meditative silence or breathing. This will help students learn how to cope with their stress. Our next policy recommendation topic is teachers and administrators. These policy recommendations are for the teachers and administrators. Policy recommendation A. The current method of teacher and administrator training on mental health challenges should be expanded to include actionable response strategies. Rather than lecture style session with the faculty, schools should adopt active learning approaches. Through simulation style exercises, faculty should develop and utilize a written faculty guide. This will help to better educate the teachers and administrators. The next policy recommendation under this topic is that faculty should receive training in how to foster open dialogue, cultivate safe spaces, and advise students through one-on-one -on -one discussions addressing challenges ranging from loneliness, anxiety, and body issues to thoughts regarding self-harm. The last policy recommendation is C. Health class teachers specifically should expand instruction of mental health information to include stress relief efforts within the classroom. These, just like policy recommendation A, will better educate teachers and administrators. Thank you for your time and consideration of the International Youth Foundation and their continued support throughout the tax journey. Thank you all again and have a great day. I would once again like to thank you guys for this amazing opportunity. Bye.